uh, final paper will be a pre and intraoperative lidocaine injection for preemptive analgesia in laparoscopic gastrectomy prospective randomized double blind placebo controlled study uh, from uh, the Korean group, uh, Dr. Kim uh, and his uh, associates from the Chungang University. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning, fellow surgeons. First of all, I'd like to thank the board of the committee for providing this opportunity to share my study with all of you. My name is Taehan Kim. I'm from Chungang University's Ho Hospital, Seoul, Korea. Uh, our study group has nothing to disclose for this present study. Until now, beyond uh, local anesthesia, lidocaine has exerted effects that cannot be explained by voltage-gated uh, sodium channels. On systemic administration, various effects were investigated. One study by the Verdenhausen showed the measure metabolites of lidocaine inhibits glycine uptake in the central nervous system, producing antinociceptive effect, which is a direct proof that, <coughs> excuse me, the direct proof that lidocaine can control pain in the central nervous system level. In peripheral uh, tissues, lidocaine also share an anti-inflammatory effect suppress lymphocyte proliferation and attenuate productions of cytokines, which is very helpful in preventing um, hyperalgesia. Recently, minimally invasive surgery has become popular for superior post-operative outcomes. However, pain still remains. Consensus is that preemptive analgesia is the mo most effective in major abdominal surgeries accompanying extensive tissue trauma. The current study was focused to evaluate the preemptive analgesic effect of perioperative intravenous lidocaine and measure postoperative outcomes. Patients who underwent uh, LADG for e early gastric cancer at uh, Chungang University Hospital, Seoul, Korea, were all enrolled. Advanced diseases and hypersensitive lidocaine were excluded for this study. <coughs> Total um, 17. Um, patients were included in each group, inject, uh, group control and injection. Injection group received an intravenous bolus injection of 1.5 milligram per kilogram of lidocaine, followed by a continuous infusion of 2 milligram per kilogram per hour during, uh, throughout the study, and, uh, excuse me, throughout the operation. After the operation, they cut the injection and no more lidocaine was injected. Control group only received the same amount of saline. The surgical techniques were as follows, five choker uh, technique, four centimeter mini laparotomy, extracorporeal anastomosis, and two drains inserted with bilirophilin anastomosis. Um, the study variab variables uh, as follows, like uh, <coughs> we studied the demographics, satisfaction score, two, four, eight, 12, 24, 48 post-operative hours, the VAST score, and button hit counts, by the uh, patients. And the total fentanyl consumption and the consumption rates were calculated by the computerized personalized, personal um, pain control devices. Look, if we look at the demographics, the demographic shows no significant differences between the groups. Um, all the p-values were over 0.05. Those statistical um, significance were not shown. When we look at the VAS scores, they, um, they show significant differences between the two groups, especially at the immediate post-operative phase and decreases in time sequences. Uh, when we look at this, is, uh, the shocking difference is shown at the very earlier of the post-operative period. The total fentanyl and button hit counts are also showed significant differences between the groups. And satisfaction score showed a tendency to decrease in the injection group, however, failed to show its statistical significance. The button and hit counts by the patients show resemblance with the VAS score, and it also shows a striking distance at, uh, at very immediate postoperative period. The fentanyl consumption rates and consumption amounts show the uh, as follows, and it also resembles the VAS and the button and hit counts. Among the adverse events, um, the nausea was the only uh, variable that showed a statistical difference between the groups. <clears throat> According to this study, 
systemic lidocaine attenuates post-operative pain, especially at immediate post-operative phase. It demonstrates significant decrease of uh, opioids and nausea, uh, basically because anti-inflammatory effect and analgesic effect of lidocaine is thought to be the main purpose and the cause of this phenomenon. Lidocaine injection is easy, cheap, feasible, and safe when administered with appropriate dosages. We demonstrated that a preemptive administration of intravenous lidocaine injection delivers a clear benefit of preoperative outcomes in laparoscopic gastrectomy. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Questions from the audience? I think this is very intriguing. What's the, um, how close to the toxicity range for the lidocaine uh, were your dosage? Um, actually, um, up on the stage, my head is really blank right now, but um, the toxic range for the, um, the doses that we used were under the cardiac uh, doses for uh, treatment levels. So we actually had not had the chance to um, um, sample the uh, serum concentrations of the lidocaine, but um, basically it's much lower than the cardiac doses. So, mm -hmm. so, I so think fairly, fairly low dose. Very, very low, yes. And do you think it's important to have continuous infusion, or what's the half-life of lidocaine in the circulation? Um, Could you just give a single preoperative bolus? All right. Um, basically, this is a third study. Uh, we tried um, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, laparoscopic appendectomy, and this is a gastrectomy. Um, the basic I idea is that when we use it before the operation, that's the key point. When you use it before the operation, then after the operation, ha it has lesser pain. So it's important that you have this lidocaine uh, pre uh, prior to the operation, and the um, metabolism only lasts for 30 minutes. And basically, the lidocaine itself has no uh, much effect of the pain control effect, but the metabolite called MEGX is the main um, thing that plays a key role. So, yes. Question from the floor. Um, Ali Tabakoli, Boston. Very nice presentation at the end of a basic science session. So, um, question I had what, what do you use for your control arm? So, a lot of the time we infiltrate the ports with local anesthetic. Uh, prior to insertion or at the time of removal? And did you use kind of that analgesic techniques for your control arms? And also you had marked benefits in the early phase, but really not much benefit in long term. And I wonder if you just gave your patients a dose of Toradol before they woke up, would you see the same analgesic benefits? Um, I'm, I th thank you very much. Um, well, first of all, we, excuse me, what was the first question again? <laughs> Did you infiltrate your port sites with lidocaine? Uh, oh, on the, con on the control group. Did you no, no, use no, no, any no, no. local infiltration on the uh, control we group? We didn't do anything with the control group. We only used normosaline with the, the um, price is the exact amount, but we didn't use any lidocaine on the control group. So that's the difference. And the second, second, second question was, um, the second question. <laughs> so you saw some marked analgesic benefits in the short term in the post-operative period, and I wonder if you just uh, gave a dose of Toradol before the patients woke up, would you would you have the same effects rather than having okay. to avoid infusing in trial? Okay. Um, the thing is that we stopped using the lidocaine um, only during the operation. So after the operation, the just observation. That's it. But basically, if we used the patients with the uh, lidocaine, I really actually should have not done it, but I omitted in this in this presentation. But we have lesser pain, a faster ambulation, and actually shorter to hospital day. But yeah, and to make a long story short, so, so is this becoming a routine practice um, at your hospital? Um, no, actually not because. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, it's all because although it's my study, the um, there are lots of um, ethical um, rules and the consensus of the other doctors are not, you know, truly understandable at this point of view. So um, I'm just hoping that one day patients don't have any pain after operation. That's my hope. 
All right, thank you very much. And thank you everybody for attending this session.